This video is going to go over some quick tricks to help you answer some inhibitor questions, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is notice that we have uh, three different types of inhibitors, and these are competitive inhibitors, non-competitive inhibitors, and uncompetitive inhibitors. And you can memorize these uh, in the specific order, in alphabetical order, so C, N, U. Now, we know we have both our KM and our Vmax values, and I'm going to uh, operate with the understanding that you guys already know what these are. So, first thing you want to do is recognize if the inhibitor will increase, decrease, or have no change. Uh, and so, you want to go in this order. So for the uncompetitive inhibitor, KM and Vmax are going to decrease. And for the non-competitive inhibitor, Vmax will decrease. Then the next thing you want to do is put no change for KM of the non-competitive and no change right here for Vmax of the competitive. And lastly, a plus for KM. And the next thing you want to know is what effect the inhibitor will have on the graph. We want to see what the line weaver berg plot would look like once the inhibitor is used. So we'll start over here with competitive inhibition. Uh, we see that, as I mentioned, KM is going to increase, but Vmax is not going to have any change. So the graph is going to look something like this. And so this is with the inhibitor, the that red color is with the inhibitor, whereas the blue is without. And you'll see, so the KM increased, Vmax has no change, so that's what it's going to look like. Next up is the graph for the non-competitive inhibitor, and once the inhibitor is used, it's going to look something like this. Right, so KM is staying the same, whereas Vmax is decreasing. And lastly, for the uncompetitive inhibitor, we're going to get a plot that looks like this. Not very straight, but you get the idea. And this is I. And so now that we know what the plots are going to look like and what the impact on KM and Vmax is, the last important thing to know is what the inhibitor is actually going to bind to. So for competitive inhibition, uh, the inhibitor I binds to free enzyme only. For non-competitive inhibition, I, the inhibitor, binds to either the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. So I'll write that out. And lastly, for uncompetitive inhibition, the inhibitor binds only to the enzyme substrate complex. So that's just a quick rundown of these different types of inhibition and some tricks to help you answer some questions. It's not entirely in-depth, but uh, I'd like to provide these shortcuts just to help people because I know they could be um, very useful in answering uh, exam questions. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can.